Hey guys, what's going on? Today, we're gonna have a look at the Haltech rotational idle function, also known as ghost cam. Which is one of those kind of extra functions that can make your car sound kind of cool. Some people love it, some people hate it. Uh, I think it's an interesting effect. I don't know if I want it on all the time, so I will eventually put mine onto a switch, but even to set it up, there's a little bit of fiddling that has to be done. So that's what I'm gonna go through now. Let's jump in. To explain what rotational idle is, uh, you know, traditionally it was used uh, for rally staging to cool down engine internals. What happens these days though, uh, the fact that these ECUs are so accessible, so easy to get for literally any car enthusiast, people like me can get these ECUs, set this up, and have the same sound and effect in my street car that those rally cars get in that you know useful scenario as well. So what it is, is it effectively mimics the sound of a lumpy cam, uh, but what's happening is one cylinder per rotation is being cut. There's no combustion event in that cylinder for that cycle, and then it moves on to the next one. The theory is that, that cools uh, the cylinder that's being cut on that rotation. I'll drop in a couple of clips here of my car set up for rotational idle, so you have some sort of idea what I'm talking about before we go too much further. Let's jump into some of the ECU settings and how I've set that up to get that to work with my setup. So I've got an RB25 in my Stadia and Haltech Elite 2000. Uh, the settings may carry over to some of the other Elite ECUs, I'm not quite sure, but that's my setup just so that you guys know, uh, you know what I'm dealing with and why things might be a certain way on my setup and it may look different to yours. All right, so first things first, I've got the uh, computer here hooked up to the ECU, which is uh, running my car right now. So what I'm doing is I've gone to the rotational idle function and we're going to enable it. This is a touch screen, but obviously, uh, you know, just click on it. So there we go. So that's enabled rotational idle. So now we've got to restart the ECU. So there we go. We've got ghost cam working or rotational idle working. So stick around to the end and the very last clip, I'm going to drop in uh, the example of what my current favorite settings are. So this is gonna show you what all these settings are as well as the fuel and timing and all that sort of stuff. And that will show you exactly what my car sounds like. I mean, look, it's not gonna get exactly there, but it's, it's probably the best that I've managed to squeeze out of this software uh, as a novice anyway. So yeah, make sure you hang around till the very end uh, to see that. So the first setting here, Kind of self-explanatory, but it's kind of the opposite to what I'm used to with the rest of the software. So the activating engine demand, I've set it as low as I could. So basically, if your foot is off the pedal, uh, it will be in rotational idle mode. Once it has 1% or more engine demand, the rotational idle function will turn off. So that's what I want. I want to be able to drive normally. Um, and if you set this too high, uh, you'll find the rotational idle actually stays engaged while you're trying to put your foot down and drive and you won't go anywhere. So it's quite annoying. So the second option there is idle valve position. I've played around with different percentages. I've found the higher the value, the better for my situation. Uh, somewhere between 90 and 99% has worked pretty well for me. Uh, but that will also be affected by the next setting, which is the end RPM. So the end RPM is essentially the higher limit of the RPM, uh, at which point uh, the engine will be cut and the RPM will fall back down to where it was initially. So in my case, my uh, idle RPM is about 950. So what happens is it starts at 950, this rotational idle function will bump it up till it gets to 1050, then it will cut and drop back down to 950. And that function will keep repeating over and over again by dropping one cylinder at a time uh, to lower engine RPM. So 1050 is a pretty good um, amount. It's a, it's a fairly quick rise from 950 up to 1050, and then it'll drop back down. So um, I found that if you make the end RPM not much higher than your normal idle RPM, uh, it will sound faster. So it'll go like that, 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 that. Whereas if you set the end RPM uh, too high, like say 200 RPM or 300 RPM higher than your idle RPM, it'll be this long, slow, build up and it'll sound a bit weird it kind of goes burp, burp, burp. and to be honest that doesn't really sound that good in my opinion anyway some people might like it uh, but most of the time i've found um, that people going for this ghost cam rotational idle kind of effect uh, want to have something a little bit faster that sounds like a bit of a meaty lumpy cam so i think 1100 is too high but i'm going to start the car and we'll go walk around the back and have a listen to how that sounds So while that sounds half decent at the exhaust side, 
at the engine bay side it sounds like it's kind of dying I think. So this end RPM value, the higher you make it, the longer the uh, kind of burst upwards is. So you'll see if we go to say 1200. So this is 1200 RPM as the end RPM. So what I've done now is I've dropped the end RPM down to 1010, so 1010 RPM. I've also dropped the idle valve position a little bit. So what the idle valve does is also affect how quickly the RPM rises after each cut. At 80%, it's slowed it down a bit. So let's drop it to 60%. It doesn't even do anything. At 70%, it's slow and lazy. So at 85%, there's a real rhythmic thump to it. And so this is now the ignition cut method. So I found that the ignition cut method uh, has a bit of a smoother sound. It's a little bit faster in general and it seems to be a little bit more rhythmic. So this is ignition cut at the same RPM. And so just to show you the difference, I've now set the idle valve position there to 99% uh, for the ignition cut. Let's go have a listen to that. So look, as you can see, there's, there's a lot of different uh, changes you can make and changing the end RPM will affect the max cutoff RPM, whereas the idle valve position kind of affects how quickly the RPM rises to that end RPM. Okay, so it'll start from your idle RPM, it'll go up to your end RPM, and that will be aided by how much the idle valve is allowing the air to pass through. So if the idle valve is open a lot, it's going to allow a lot of air through, and it'll, it'll sort of bump the RPM up really quickly. Whereas if you have it down at about 50 or 60% I've found, um, the, you know, there's not enough air flowing through there fast enough, and you get this really slow rise of the uh, engine speed. So it's, it's important to kind of play with the two of them in tandem until you find something that works well. Then there's a couple of other things that we want to uh, have a look at. One is ignition timing at idle, at zero demand. And the other thing is fueling at zero demand or at no load as well. So if we go to our zero demand table, so under ignition tuning and then zero demand, uh, you'll find this table here. So this is when there's no load on the engine, such as in an idle condition. So if the car is on, but just sitting, doing what it's doing, this is the table that it's going to use for ignition timing. So looking at the table here, if I look at the RPM of 1,000 and 1,100, I've pulled about 10 or five degrees out of each of those values respectively, and that really helped with the kind of lump effect. It still doesn't have the full chop of a proper set of cams, but this definitely helps bring out that punchiness. So it's definitely something to look at. Whatever the, the stock value was, I'd be comfortable taking five or 10, maybe even 15 degrees uh, off that and dropping those, uh, those values right down. So the last thing that we want to uh, have a look at is the fueling. So it sounds kind of good. The RPM's fluctuating up and down. It's kind of rising, it's cutting, and it's falling back down. What we also want it to do is uh, we want to induce a little bit of a stumble uh, in these cells. So uh, leaning the fuel out a little bit. Now look, I know people talk about leaning things out is bad, but in this case, we have zero demand on the engine. It's not going anywhere, it's not doing anything. All it's trying to do is keep the car running, keep it idling. So we're just gonna lean out the mixture a little bit uh, from experience, maybe around 10, 20% of fuel out. Uh, but again, just play with some of the settings until we see what works. The cell that I've got highlighted there uh, is about where my car likes to idle. And you can see obviously it's, it's uh, at the 1000 RPM um, row, which is about where I've got the rotational idle set as well. So that's the cell we're gonna try uh, and pull about 20% of the fuel out to start and we'll see how it sounds.
All right, so one last little trick to try to make this idle sound a little bit more messed up, uh, and that is to enable VCT at idle. So normally VCT, in my tune, my VCT was uh, set to switch on at 1100 RPM. In the stock tune, I've seen it turn on a little bit later. So in order to enable VCT at idle, there's a couple of quick things in this table that we have to do. So firstly, this is under engine functions, then cam control switched. So like I said, this is for me with an RB25, I have uh, VCT. If you have a Toyota, it'll be VVTi, you know, uh, Hondas, VTEC, whatever. What we want to do is basically turn it on. Uh, so that will increase the intake uh, timing, but it will leave the exhaust timing relatively the same. So that's going to increase the overlap where the intake valves and the exhaust valves are open for a little bit longer at the same time. So that'll help with that uh, chopping effect, uh, like a set of real cams with an aggressive profile. So what we want to do here, originally the minimum TPS value was set to 1%, which kind of makes sense because usually this isn't on at idle. So if your foot is off the throttle, you will not have VCT. As soon as you touch the throttle pedal, then the VCT uh, engages. So in this case, I've just removed that minimum requirement. So now 0% throttle, VCT will be on, as well as the minimum on load a minimum load on RPM. So basically this is the minimum RPM where it turns on. So I've now set that to 500. So obviously my car idles just above uh, 500. So setting this value lower than my actual idle RPM will mean that it will also be enabled at idle. All right, so I'm not changing any other settings in this version of the, uh, the Ghost Cam rotational idle settings. All the other fuel and timing and all that sort of stuff is basically the same. Let's go and have a listen to what that sounds like now with, uh, with the VCT enabled at idle as well. So there you go guys, that's a bit of a look at how to set up and tweak the settings for the Haltech rotational idle function. Hopefully that helped you out. As you saw, there's a few different parameters that you can tweak to you know, get things sounding the way that you want, uh, getting the duration and that sort of stuff, how you want it to sound. So go nuts, have fun, let me know what you think. So guys, if you found this video useful, please do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you wouldn't mind, and uh, yeah, drop a comment, let me know how you went, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Bye.